Step number eight, identify your list segmentation strategy. What is segmentation? Segmentation means separating your list subscribers into smaller sublists based on their specific interests or preferences. It's not enough that they are interested in your niche generally. It's not enough that they are looking to solve a certain set of problems. By breaking down their specific interests in your niche, you can send them more targeted information that could lead to them buying more products. You can also segment people based on their purchasing behavior. You are leaving a lot of money on the table if you keep most of your list members on your general info list. You can send update after update to this general list, and I can almost guarantee that the majority of the people are probably not going to buy stuff. Wouldn't it be a better use of your time to get this list of people to filter themselves by going on a buyer's list? Once they are on your buyer's list, you can then send better crafted or more targeted emails to get them to buy stuff. Implementing Segmentation Strategies To get people to filter themselves into sublists, send email updates with links to more specialized email lists. These lists target more specific needs. Over time, as you send one update after another, these sublists will fill up with people. You then need to send specific emails targeting the particular interests of the people on those sublists. This increases the likelihood that people in the specialized list would buy something because you are pushing products and services that cater to their particular interests. The second way you can segment is to get people to sign up to sublists from the beginning. That's right, you're not starting out with a general list. Instead, when people go to your blog or your website, they see different ads for mailing lists. These ads actually talk about specific issues and are very different from each other. When somebody clicks on a particular ad, they sign up for a list that only talks about the issues raised by the ads. They also only offer incentives that address tightly defined specific issues. This is a slower way of building lists, but it's more targeted. With everything else being equal, the slow growth rate of your mailing list can be offset by the higher sales conversions of people signing up to those specialized sub-lists. The third approach you could take involves selling lower dollar items. You start with your general list, and you send one update after another promoting a $1 product. When people buy these $1 items, they end up on your buyer's list. Behind the scenes, they are automatically unsubscribed from your main list. Given enough time, you should have a fairly nice list of people who have bought $1 items. You then should focus most of your time crafting high converting updates that target your buyer's list. This maximizes your return on effort. Instead of sending update after update to your general info list, hoping that people will buy a $20, $50, or even a $300 item, focus all your conversion firepower on a list of people who were tried and proven buyers. This saves you a lot of time and effort. You should still send updates to your general information list. However, you should space these apart and focus on value. You should also advertise only lower dollar items. If you do this right, you would be able to save a lot of money while making a lot of money. How is this done? First, you can easily see through your email list management system which of your list members are not opening your emails. You then prune these general information list members by automatically unsubscribing people who have not opened your emails. Whoever is left still opens your emails, and you still have a chance of converting these people into buyers later. If done right, segmenting your list into a general information list, then a buyer's list not only saves you time, but it also can save you money later. Be aware of your competitor's industry standard list segmentation. At this point, you should have already signed up to your competitor's mailing list. You should already know the topics that they send updates on. You should also be very familiar with the content of their updates. Pay attention to the common features of these emails and try to connect the dots. How do they segment their list members? Which of the general strategies described above are they using? Once you are clear as to their segmentation strategy, you might want to start there. Again, this is the industry standard. You're not exactly married to it. You can change it up later. You can make improvements based on how your list behaves. Don't neglect this segmentation strategy. Let's face it, people do unsubscribe. This is a fact of life. Don't think that just because you work hard to offer the right incentives to the right people, 
that they would remain loyal to your list. People do sign up, and after some time, they unsubscribe. However, you can reduce your unsubscribe rate by simply asking people who wish to unsubscribe to change the update frequency of their membership on your list. Depending on your list automation software, you can offer list members a choice as to how frequently you will send them updates. Don't neglect this powerful tip, because this can save your list. Instead of the vast majority of your list members unsubscribing after a certain amount of time, you can hang on to a large chunk of them and possibly convert them into buyers later. Why segment? Why should you segment your list? People find themselves in your mailing list for a wide variety of reasons. While they share a common interest in your niche, that's probably the only thing they have in common. They can all agree on the one problem your niche focuses on. Despite this, they might have different related problems they need solved. A problem like weight loss, for example, has many different parts. Maybe some people are struggling with weight loss because of their metabolic rate. Other people simply eat a lot and have impulse control problems. Others tend to have a certain lifestyle. Whatever the case may be, these people agree on the common problem of weight loss. However, they may have different sub-problems they need addressed. As a result, they might need different stages of the conversion process. Some may need more information before they commit to buying a product. Others are already clear on the solution but they just need a recommendation they can trust. Obviously, you can't send the same message to these people and expect the same results. It's just not going to happen. For every one person who is ready to whip out their credit card and make a purchase, there are probably dozens if not hundreds of others who are still trying to make up their mind. Maybe they are looking for more information. Maybe they already have an idea, but they need to know more about specific solutions. Maybe others trust a solution but just need you to push them off that fence. Do you see the difference among these groups of people? This is where segmentation comes in. You need to set up a process where the people can be sent messages that will push them closer to the point of conversion. I've already covered the three strategies you should use to segment your mailing list. The following segmentation strategies are more detailed. Implement them after you've done the three main strategies listed above. You can segment your list members' emails using the following criteria. Location. If you tend to attract list members from many parts throughout the country and you send out offers that can be regionalized, this may be a good option for you. Send only updates related to a specific region to people who live there. This makes the information more relevant to them, builds more trust, and leads to greater conversions down the road. Activity Level People who open your emails a lot have different expectations from people who casually open your emails. For people who are very big fans of your mailing list, you might want to ask them to sign up for another list in exchange for a reward. When they sign up for this other list, you can send them more frequent updates, and you can probably get away with trying to push them harder to buy stuff. They probably wouldn't mind because they already made it a habit to open and read your emails. Less frequent openers, on the other hand, can remain on your main list. You can send them updates at regular intervals. Lack of Activity if people sign up for your autoresponder series but don't seem to open your emails, you might want to set up an automatic reminder system. Depending on the email platform you're using, set up the system to send a reminder email asking the recipient to respond or ask you a question. This lets you know whether the recipient is completely ignoring your emails. If this is the case, then you can prune these list members. Since they're no longer opening your emails and you've already reached out to them to get them to open your emails, it's probably a safe bet that you can delete them from your subscriber base without any negative effects. Just send different updates based on incentives downloaded by the list member. As I mentioned earlier, you can run different email lists on the same blog or website page. When people click these ads to sign up to a list, they're actually signing up to different email lists. Usually, these different lists offer different incentives. Increase the conversion rate of these different lists by making sure that your updates are guided by the incentive downloaded by the list members. For example, if the list member downloaded a video, chances are quite good that this person probably would want to watch other videos. On the other hand, if this person downloaded a graphics template or a graphics package, they're probably more interested in similar types of content. Make sure that your updates speak to these different incentive preferences so you can maximize your sales conversions. 
separate InfoList members from buyers using low dollar product offers. I've mentioned this above, but this is so powerful that I can't help but mention it again. Depending on your niche, it may be unavoidable that you end up with a general information list. You work hard to offer incentives, get people to sign up to your mailing list, and at the end of the day, you have a lot of people on this list. However, these people are generally just looking for general information on your niche. They're also all over the place when it comes to conversion ability. In this case, it's a good idea to send regularly scheduled updates with low dollar information product offers. Personally, I would push for really cheap stuff. We're talking about a $1 booklet, a $1 template package, or whatnot. Let your system send out these offers and set up your email on this management software to unsubscribe people automatically who buy these $1 items. Here's how you set it up. It's actually quite simple. When you send out your updates to your general information list, these updates will contain a link to your sales pitch. When people click that link, they see a purchase button. When they purchase, they were actually taken first to an email sign-up page. When they enter the same email address they use to get on your general information list, your email management software system will automatically unsubscribe them from the general information list and put them on the buyer's list. This way, when you send updates to your general information list, your tried and proven buyers will not see those updates. This is a good thing because you don't want them to feel that you're spamming them by sending them so many emails. You should then pay more attention to your buyers list. Maybe you should send them updates with more in-depth solutions. Or you should send them higher quality information to get them to buy higher priced products or services. Segment your list based on mobile versus desktop. This is really non-negotiable. Over 60% of internet users view the internet through a mobile device. The problem is that these devices have different screen sizes. Make sure your mailing list segments your list buyers based on their screen preference. Depending on the email list automation software you're using, you should be able to automatically detect this. Regardless, your squeeze page must be mobile ready. In other words, it doesn't really matter what device visitors use to view your squeeze page, your page would look really good. It would look its best. Optimize your squeeze page for all environments. It shouldn't matter whether your audience is viewing your squeeze page through a mobile phone, a desktop, or a tablet.